today in Mesa County, and it will be another one tomorrow despite the overcast and fog. And that's partly because we're surrounded by these amazing views and some of the most beautiful animals, too. One of them being the bighorn sheep. Our Timber Schumann has more. Desert bighorn sheep, animals impossibly adapted to the extremes of their habitat. Concaved hoofs, smaller and more circular than elk or deer, create suction cups, allowing them to defy gravity and gracefully scour steep canyon walls. Rectangular pupils help them see a much wider field of view than humans to avoid predators. And giant horns of carotene, the same fiber in our nails, make for some great battering rams. If you look closely, you'll see larger rings and then smaller ones, and those big deep grooves are typically the grooves that we use to help determine their age. Interpretive Program Manager Caitlin Thomas for Colorado National Monument tells me her team monitors these amazing creatures to make sure they are healthy and thriving. We only do official population studies every 10 years. Official population counts require things like helicopters where you go out and you actually take aerial images of the herd and that can really disturb the herd so you want to do those kind of far apart right every 10 years or so. Still she tells me Colorado National Monument and Parks and Wildlife band together to do smaller yearly surveys heavily dependent on volunteers. Our volunteers uh, will either travel by foot or by vehicle throughout the monument to check out the uh, different canyons and nooks and crannies. So my job if I was a volunteer would be to walk through a canyon decided by the rangers and look for bighorn sheep. To help with that, I get two pieces of paper. This one is the guide to help me understand what I might find, and this is the sheet that I actually take the notes on. The sheet will ask you what behaviors you are noticing, you know, where are they, what are they doing, um, what sex, so are they male, are they female. Caitlin tells me rams, or the boys, have shorter noses than the girls. And we use those numbers to determine ratios which helps us uncover the health of the herd. We think that the herd is relatively stable because our ewe to lamb ratio is right around 20 to 100, and, and that's what you want to see. For last year's count, we counted 54 sheep in the monument. Caitlin tells me she thinks the actual population of the Black Ridge unit herd, the ones on the monument, is closer to 200 and similar to the last official helicopter survey 10 years ago. Joel Berger, a key player in wildlife conservation through Colorado State University, tells me while some of them are relatively used to humans after more and more people started exploring their territory, not all of them are, which could affect the volunteers' count. They're pretty sensitive and they show flight about five to ten times more. If moms are, or moms-to-be are running five to ten times as far, those impacts can be pretty significant. So if you're seeing females in the springtime, the best is just going to leave them alone because they're trying to get the best food that they can and that's when the first grasses are starting to emerge. I asked Berger for a fun fact about these bighorns most people don't know. <coughs> Ravens don't scare them. Caitlin says the next count happens in April or May. If you'd like to be a part of it, visit westernslopenow.com to learn more. Reporting for KRX5, I'm Tibber Schumann. Thank you, Tim.